Hello there. When academic studies have focused on establishing a positive relationship between culture and innovation, they don't always show their relationship with each other. Culture is like a fingerprint in your organization. How your company operates and why it operates the way it does is unique and what identifies you as a company. In this video, the last of the three-part series, I will be discussing learning culture and innovation-oriented culture. What it is, identifying the unique focus of each type of culture, providing a real-life business example, and most importantly, what you as a small business can do to cultivate and nurture each culture type to support innovation and drive your business to success. I'll be right back. Welcome back. My name is Raymond Huan, and if you own a business, you are interested in business, or you wish to learn about the tips and tricks on how to operate your business better, I encourage you to click on the subscribe button that you see before you right now. A learning culture focuses on learning and development of the entire team. Teams contribute to overall team innovation as they develop new knowledge and new skills, creating an environment that is for the appropriate learning and knowledge transfer and enhances and facilitates innovation. A learning culture goes beyond providing opportunities for learning, particularly formal professional development programs that focus on formalized training and mentoring structures. It's not just the learning opportunities that count. In fact, what counts most is how learning is transferred within the organization. Learnings don't just focus on direct learning. They also cultivate an environment that facilitates indirect learning and knowledge transfer. Eclasen is an Australian program management software company with global offices in seven countries. They value transparency and openness and teamwork and change. And they are known for affording team members with autonomy and flexibility and the hallmarks of a clan culture and an adaptable culture. However, what makes them a learning culture is how they put their values to work. They value openness and transparency, which fuels knowledge sharing. The hallmark of adolescence is the value they place on feedback and a unique culture of respectful dissent. To create a culture of respectful dissent, they encourage everyone to argue like you're right and listen like you're wrong. In Atlasen, dissenting is encouraged. It's okay to disagree, it's okay to have a different opinion, and it's okay to express dissent. It matters, however, that you are respectful when you dissent. It also matters that you listen when someone dissents. In Atlasen, they believe that growth in the organization comes from diversity in opinion. How can you learn and see things differently if everyone thought the same? Through seeing things differently, we find new ways to do things and improve upon them. The company believes that it is through respectful dissent that real ideas come out and better decisions are made. With better decisions, you can formulate better processes that serve the entire company, develop better products and services, and better serve your customers. This is the formula for Ellison's success. The key phrase is respectful dissent. The key to encouraging dissent is not just in providing opportunities to speak up and speak out, it is encouraging everyone in a position to make changes or drive the change to listen. In fact, we are more likely to encourage dissent when leaders demonstrate that they are willing to listen. A culture of openness and transparency is demonstrated in listening. So more than in speaking out, people are encouraged to dissent respectfully when they know that they will be listened to, when they know that other people will value their opinion. An innovation-orientated culture focuses on developing the innovativeness. That means consciously developing mindsets and processes that ensure that team members continually and intentionally ask, how can I improve this? How can I make things better? An innovation-orientated culture emphasizes innovation. It takes risks, learning, and is future-orientated. The difference between a learning culture and an innovation-orientated culture is the level of openness and transparency. Unlike a learning culture, most innovation-oriented 
companies focus less on transparency, more on secrecy between teams and departments, and they share information more on a need-to-know basis. Apple has nurtured an organization culture for creative innovation. It describes its mission in the following manner. To bring the best personal computing products and support the students, educators, designers, scientists and engineers, business persons and consumers in over 140 countries around the world. To deliver the best, the company demands high levels of creativity and innovation from its employees at all levels. Secrecy is a characteristic of Apple's corporate culture, and many employees are known to gatekeep information. But this does not mean that they keep their employees completely in the dark, or that they do not engage in knowledge sharing. In fact, the company has famously established an Apple University, an internal education initiative where employees can sign up for courses tailored to their positions and backgrounds through an internal website available only to Apple staff members. And in keeping with Apple's culture of secrecy, there's not much known or published about the Apple University. There are also other informal hallmarks of Apple's creative innovation. The Apple campus has been designed to stimulate creativity and innovation, and the company has been known for its informal dress code, a policy that encourages creativity and self-expression. The late Steve Jobs, the founder of Apple, famously said, Some people say give customers what they want, but that's not my approach. Our job is to figure out what they are going to want before they do. And I think if Henry Ford once said, if I'd asked customers what they wanted, they would have told me a faster horse. People don't know what they want until you show it to them. That's why I never rely on market research. Our task is to read things that are not yet on the page. This quote illustrates Apple's future orientatedness and what it is for. Their goal is to give the customer what they want before they even ask for it. And this is exactly what contributed to its success. The key phrase is, read things that are not yet on the page. Cultivating and nurturing an innovation-orientated culture means setting up an environment that will allow people to read things that are not yet on the page. That means being open to and even encouraging experimentation. It means ridding the system of unnecessary bottlenecks that hinders decision-making or the execution of new projects and initiatives. It also means training for success. While you might gatekeep information for a selected few, this should not hinder you from sharing lessons learned from innovation experiments. Finally, remember that innovation stems from having an open mind and having an attitude that consistently seeks to improve things. It means cultivating a mindset of continuous improvement. To summarize this video, a learning culture focuses on learning and developing the entire team. It encourages healthy and respectful dissent among team members, and it thrives when teams are open and transparent with each other. Atlassian is an example of an organization with a learning culture. An innovation-orientated culture emphasizes innovation, it takes risks, learnings, and being future-orientated. A hallmark of this culture is team members continually and intentionally asking, how can I improve this? How can I make things better? Apple is an example of an innovation-orientated organization. Knowing the different types of culture and their core focus, what kind of culture do you think your team cultivates? Do you look inward and focus on nurturing the team and working in a friendly environment? Or do you look outward and focus on addressing customer pain points? Do you focus on making your systems efficient by being more stable or being more flexible? More importantly, does your team embody the culture type that will enable your team to innovate? Do your processes, protocols, and policies support your culture? My name is Raymond Huan. Thank you very much for watching this video. I trust that the last few videos on organizational and company culture have been productive for you and that you would use the knowledge gained to further improve your business. I look forward to catching up with you in the next video very soon.